Dear delegates, dear members of institutions of Africa, Asia, Latin America, and Canada, dear members of the University of Landau, ladies and gentlemen, the delegation of El Salvador, represented in person by Dr. Carlos Orantes, specialist of the Health Ministry of El Salvador for Nephrology and head of research Nephrolempa Nephrosalva, and myself, ambassador from El Salvador to Germany. This delegation is part of a multidisciplinary and interinstitutional local group in El Salvador with the following members. Dr. Rafael Gomez from the University of El Salvador, Giovanni Molina from the Ministry of Environment and Natural Resources of El Salvador, and Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the area of cooperation with Ana Vasquez, and multilateral cooperation with Sergio Gallardo. The delegation of El Salvador wishes to thank the University of Landau, Dean Professor Schulz, and especially Professor Niehaus and Dr. Heber for their support and cooperation with our country, making possible our participation at the present ATC follow-up initiative. The increased vulnerability experienced in El Salvador and the Central American region due to the impacts and events associated to climate change pose challenges that cannot be postponed. It obliges the state to provide special attention to the areas of integrated disaster risk management and adaption to climate change. The UN COPIUS activities and technologies have a key role. For the Central American region, which is located on the Pacific Ring of Fire, an area with earthquakes and volcanic eruptions occur frequently. Catastrophes are not a new threat. New is the magnitude and frequency of climate phenomena. At least one Central American country ranks each year in the top countries listed by the Global Climate Risk Index, German Watch. In 2010, El Salvador was listed with the highest risk. 89% of the territory is considered zone of risk. More than 95% of our population, 6 million people, live in these zones of high risk. In the last three years, El Salvador has been struck by several extreme climate events, such as Ida in 2009 and the Tropical Depression in 2011. According to the consultative group report published in December 2011 by the Economic Commission for Latin America and the Caribbean, CEPAL, the Tropical Depression 12E affected almost 2.6 million people in Central America and left damages for a total of nearly 2 billion US dollars. In El Salvador, which concentrated more than half of the affected population, was specially struck. In our country, the damage costs amounted almost 1 billion US dollars, to be precise, 902 million. With most of the damages to transport and housing, infrastructure, as well as landscape, agriculture, livestock and fisheries. The floods and heavy rainfalls displaced 60,000 persons. The presidents of the member countries of the Central American Regional Integration System, SICA, signed in October 2011 the Comalapa Declaration addressing the effects of the Tropical Depression 12E, the last extreme event that affected the region. The presidents promote short and long-term sub-regional initiatives and the increase of know-how and capacity building for rehabilitation and reconstruction of the affected zones, as well as in the field of integrated risk management and adaptation to climate change. To achieve this goal, a consultative group was created with support of governments and multilateral organisms. The Depression System 12E from October last year was the most extreme hydrometeorological event registered in our country, worse than Hurricane Mitch in 1998. 
During the 12E, the maximum rainfall accumulated 1,513 millimeters, 75 percent more than the amount accumulated during Hurricane Mitch. Floods affected around 10 percent of the territory of El Salvador. Flooded areas remained underwater for three to five weeks after the storm, thus having a devastating effect on crops and livestock, threatening the livelihood of the affected people. As these phenomena are not only national and regional, a international consensus is required for the actions and measures to prevent the effects. The government of El Salvador has advocated the importance of the disaster risk management and adaptation to climate change as necessary for a successful political, economical and environmental regional integration. Recently, the government of El Salvador created an institutional environment response. The Secretary for Vulnerability Affairs, Secretaria para Asuntos de Vulnerabilidad, involved in the creation of civil defense structures and elaborating procedures and regulations non-existent in previous administrations. The Ministry of Environment and Natural Resources, MARN, installed a new radar system, Furuno FR-1525, the first of its kind in the region. This monitoring system enables national coverage and rainfall forecast, allowing a faster risk assessment and preventing measures. The meteorological station network has been res recently expanded and modernized as well as the networks for water level measurements in rivers and maritime stations. The seismic network has been expanded with 15 new stations. The social capacities are also strengthened by early warning systems. These networks are composed of local observers at the highest risk locations in the country, appropriately equipped and trained who are coordinated to the government authorities and institutions. The government of El Salvador agreed in the Comalapa Declaration to establish the use of appropriate technology in the construction and reconstruction of infrastructure, taking in consideration the new parameters of climate variability and climate change. El Salvador will need at this point the support of the international community and multilateral organizations for the transfer of technology expertise and capacity building as well as access to financing. El Salvador participated at the UN Spider platform. Representatives of the Ministry of Environment joined the first international meeting organized by the platform in Bonn. In November 2011, technicians from the Ministry of Environment were trained in the analysis of radar images for flood zoning. We are grateful and appreciate very much the efforts and initiatives of the international community that have benefited our country within the framework of UN SPIDER. The government of El Salvador sees UN COPIUS as important body in the search of scientific solutions to the urgent challenges like climate change. As mentioned before, Adaption to climate change is a task which cannot be separated from development goals. The Adaption ad Agenda under the United Nations Framework Convention for Climate Change has become a priority in most vulnerable countries such as El Salvador. However, there are other urgent problems that represent big, big threats to our societies. One of these to which I would like to raise awareness is the public health problem. Our country is aware of the possibilities to solve other problems that are not climate related, as for example, in public health fields such as epidemiology using integrated systems of information, space system based disaster management support and the platform for space based information for disaster management and emergency response. Unispace 3, where we would like to advocate for the search of solutions for public health problems. 
like epidemic outbreaks and causes of a disease, geographical distribution through the capacities built in the platforms. In El Salvador, we suffer the presence of transmissible tropical diseases, such as dengue fever and malaria, and other vector-borne diseases. There is also evidence of geographical distribution of serious diseases, such as chronic kidney disease, with which without early detection and treatment results in fatalities. In El Salvador, chronic kidney disease is the fifth cause of death for both female and male population. Considering only the male population, it is the second cause of death nationwide. Studies such as Nephrolempa, which investigated the presence of kidney damage specific biomarkers in urine of subjects and its correlation with risk factors associated to the communities of Pajolempa, Jiquilisco, in Yusulután department, pointed out to a statistical correlation between agricultural activity and chronic kidney disease. In Central America, mainly El Salvador and Nicaragua, Paraquat or Gramoxon is the cultural agent identified most frequently at workplace by agricultural workers on plantations. Specific research is needed to establish nation and regional systems of surveillance for pesticide poisoning. Also the potential influence of environmental, occupational and lifestyle risk factors is not well understood and must be further explored. The University of Landau and the University of El Salvador started a cooperation agreement in order to promote and facilitate academic and scientific exchange to enhance teaching, education and research and exploring ways to start cooperative research projects. With this background, we need better monitoring and modeling systems to clarify questions such as vectors, contaminants or such other variable spatial distribution, valuable data to explain, prevent, remediate and solve the problem. In our cases, geographical information systems and remote sensing are a significant part of the solution. In this respect, the government of the Republic of El Salvador welcomes the initiative to create the United Nations Open Space for Public Health Applications Capacity and Expertise, UN Open Space, to address problems and promote improvements in public health by application of space technology and kindly ask for international support to forward this important initiative. We advocate for an active and lively interchange of ideas, information, methodologies and best practices. The government of El Salvador wishes to express its deep appreciation to United Nations and international institutions and governments which have provided assistance during and after the disaster that have struck our nation. Also, we want to convey that El Salvador has the human resources, which mainly need the necessary infrastructure and better training to be able to cope with challenges ahead. In this regard, we will continue to appreciate the support of the international community and specifically of UN COPUS and are looking forward to coordinate a next workshop and to welcome you to El Salvador. Thank you very much.